Welcome back to Fishing North Atlantic. In this video, we are going through 20 tips that are going to help you out with your fishing experiences. We're gonna jump straight into them. Number one is to make sure you explore the map. You will find secret boats and points of interest if you take a look at the map. Points of interest, Browns North, Wind Farm. These can all be used as fast travel points. The boats won't actually pop up on your map once you found them. They will just be available to purchase in the ports. For an example, up here, you will find a boat called Fix. So make sure you grab as many points of interest as possible. Also, do not forget to unlock the ports. There are six in total in the game. Up on the far left, the far top left of the map, you have Ingle's Head. Then over to the east, you've got Digby. Moving down is where you start at Yarmouth. Then you've got Dennis Point, Lockport. And then you have finally, top right pretty much, you have Lunenburg. Do not forget if you are out on the hunt for boats and points of interest to make sure you have purchased the radar upgrade as that will allow you to discover things at a much greater distance. Okay, next up is to make sure that at every single port you visit, you dock, you go to town, down to the bar, there are tips that are available. They will give you locations of fish. They're not always 100% reliable. Most of the time it's either three days ago or a week ago. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this location of the mackerel from a week ago. In fact, I'll purchase all three. Then they will pinpoint these areas on the map for you. So if we have a look, you have swordfish down here three days ago. You have redfish here three days ago. And for some reason, unless I'm being blind, the mackerel one doesn't actually work. There seems to be quite a few bugs in the game. I mean, if you have a look here, we've got some land sharks that have appeared because boats are seeming to do their fishing and stuff in this area that's just all land. So yeah, the mackerel one hasn't worked, but the swordfish and the redfish, if you go around those sorts of areas, you will typically find the fish. I think these pinpoints are good for a long amount of time. I've seen like pinpoints that are like 10 days old and there's still fish in that sort of area. So make sure every port you visit, you are looking at the bar at the tips because they will help you locate fish. Next up, if we look at the top right of the screen, you have a reputation. Higher reputation improves the prices of fish sold and increases the difficulty and reward of jobs. Increase your reputation at each port by completing jobs, selling fish and spending money. You will eventually, due to fish prices and stuff, just build up rep at all six ports. But if you've constantly got good prices at one port, then keep selling there because the more you purchase boats and upgrades and sell your fish, the higher your rep, the higher your fish prices will eventually be. Next up, another thing done through ports, always make sure you are upgrading your boat whenever you can afford it. If we have a look, it's always going to help you with your fishing efficiency. And the things you can upgrade will change based on the boat you are using. They all have different things that you can upgrade. You can do things like storage so you can carry more fish, engines so you're faster, your radar so that you can explore the points of interest and stuff from a further distance, autopilot if you want it. You can even increase your fishing quotas, your sonar, your buoys, gutting, searchlights, thrusters. As I said, each boat will have different things you can upgrade. But make sure as soon as you can upgrade them, you are doing it because it's going to help you out a lot. Next up is to make sure you are using the correct bait that is based on the fish you are going for, as it will help you catch more of that species, although you will still catch others too. With the Ocean Runner, that's the boat I'm currently using, I always go for swordfish. It's my favorite thing, the most expensive fish at the moment for me. So what I will do is I will bait my deep lines with squid. It shows you a little pie chart and you've got the color of which fish is available at the biggest sort of capacity using this bait. So you can see here, majority swordfish, little bit of tuna. Then you can see with the herring, it's the other way around. Little bit of swordfish, but you're mainly going to catch tuna. So you can catch other species using bait, but always use the correct bait for the species you're going for. Just a quick tip to let you know that each fishing technique you try in the game will have a tutorial for it. It's not just going to throw you in at the deep end. It will explain how all of the features, the mechanics and stuff work. Because you do have several types of fishing. You've got lobster fishing, you have crab fishing, then you've got like nets, long lines, deep lines. There are a few, but you are safe. There are tutorials for every one. 
when you are out at sea, you can leave your captain's chair. So if we go into first person by pressing V on the keyboard, hold F to stop driving and jump out of the captain's chair. If you look around, it'll be in different places that are on your boat. I'm using the ocean runner. So if I turn around, there will be a clock on the wall. Every single boat has a clock as far as I'm aware. Go up to that clock, interact with it, and you can anchor so you can skip time whilst you're on your boat. So you don't have to port hop. If you've just set all of your lines, say you're using the ocean runner, you've just dropped 40 deep lines. Instead of having to go back to port, rest for a certain amount of hours, then go back out to sea, you can simply just anchor. You can rest for that set amount of hours. It's going to spawn you straight back at your fish. My boat is currently set up for deep lining, but when you are long lining, it's going to be different types of fish. Swordfish and tuna will go back to the port as fresh fish. Other fish like pollock, haddock, cod, so on and so forth will have to be gutted. Your boat layout will be different. You won't have all these buckets here with the deep lines that you can see and you will have gutting machines. If you don't have the machines, you'll just have the original gutting table. But if you have crew members on your boat and they are set to gutting fish, if you skip time in game, which you can do at port or by interacting with the clock that is available on your boat, it speeds up the process. So you don't have to just sit there and wait for your crew to gut the entire lot of fish you have on your boat, which is incredibly helpful because boats like the Moby D have a 100,000 kilo capacity that will take forever for your crew to get through. Talking about crew, make sure you hire some good crew members when you can afford them. They will actually become more efficient at tasks they do with experience. They kind of level up in this game. Back into third person, if you have a look on the screen, I have my HUD. Pressing H on the keyboard will hide it, then pressing H again will bring it back up. If you are in first person, you can't interact with your HUD. You can't turn it on or off because you have to do everything on your boat. When you are in third person, you'll have your mouse cursor on screen. You can interact with all of this. You can zoom in and out of your map. Over on the left hand side, you have your PDA. This is the weather tab. Then you've got the lights on your boat. You can check your sonar. You can have a look at what fish you've got on your boat and then you can check out the gear and stuff that you have. And then clicking up here will allow you to interact with your crew. So you don't have to go into first person, pick up the phone and manage them. You can manage them right here. You can find out info so you can see their skills and stuff. And you can also drag them over and set them up to prepare gear. Do all of the tasks so that they can do through the phone, but you can do it all in third person. You can also sort out your music and stuff from here too. When you are playing in this game and you've just sold a haul, do not forget to bait your lines up again. Fishing gear, bait deep lines. Make sure they are baited because you can only purchase bait at ports. You can't carry any out to sea so that you can bait up on the journey. You have to do it at the port. So if you forget, you go and travel, I don't know, let's say eight nautical miles away. That's going to be a lot of fuel wasted. That's going to be time wasted. So make sure you remember to bait up your lines before you head out. And then, this beautiful boat, the Ocean Runner, make sure you buy it. It is amazing for Swordfish and Tuna on this game, which can have the highest prices, and the boat is fairly cheap. It only costs $695,000, which does sound like a lot, but one single haul that I've done brought me in $1.4 million from Swordfish and Tuna, and you are going to need a lot of money because the most expensive boat in this game is around $30 million. So a tip, if you're looking for good swordfish and tuna, you can set this up several different ways. You can re-rig it for different types of fishing. The $700,000 will be made back very fast, and it's an amazing boat. Easy to handle, good speed. It's just probably the best boat I've used so far, and I've used quite a few. Back into the port again, if you go to the town tab, there is a bank. You can borrow money, but the more you borrow or the longer you borrow the money for, the more interest that gets slapped on top. The higher your rep and the more you like fish and the more experience you gain in the game, the more you'll be able to borrow. You can, if you've made enough money, repay it back instantly. But let's go to borrow. I can take $3.2 million out over 48 months. But you will see that that has a 20% interest rate and it's $95,000 per month. But because I've played a decent amount of the game, I can take 3.2 million. The bank could come in very handy for upgrades, buying new boats and stuff. But yes, there is a bank in the game. This one has helped me out a lot over the course of my playtime. 
and that is to use the finance tab in your full screen PDA because once we go over there click on fish prices and as long as you have visited the ports it's going to bring up the fish prices you can use this drop down menu to select all six of the ports in the game if you've unlocked them and it will tell you at the bottom and this changes you can see at Ingalls head 3468 Digby 4452 it shows you all of the prices so that you can figure out where to head to to sell your fish before you make the journey. No more port hopping. Next up, we are going to use the wiki in the game because fish in this game have seasons. If you go down to fish types and you have a look, for an example, swordfish tells you the season. It's best caught from August to October every single season. Tuna, June to September. It shows you for all fish in the game, September to Feb, for cod is incredibly helpful knowing the best sort of times to catch the fish you're going for back at ports you can also do this from the clock in your cabin on your boat you can skip time in the general tab and you can skip per hour up to 24 hours and you can also skip one week at a time you can use this to skip forward a couple of weeks and you can just keep checking the fish prices but there is a little trick say for example swordfish are $40 per kilo. If you ad advance time by about two or three weeks and the price goes down, that's obviously going to be a negative impact. You're going to have to just keep forwarding more time. You could miss out on some really good fish prices. So what I'd recommend doing if you are skipping to try and get better prices on fish is save your game first. If you save your game beforehand, you can just skip as much as you want until you get the best prices and you can just see which sort of times and you can plan out your fishing adventures and you do it with no risk of losing any progress or anything like that because you can just check the prices, note it down and then just load your save game and you're back to square one. Another incredibly important thing is to make sure every single time you go back to a port, you head to the dock tab, you go to your maintenance, you repair your hull, $82 for me, and you also buy fuel. Your boats will burn through fuel, especially if you're fast traveling I'm pretty sure fast traveling will use up 50% more fuel than just sitting out the journey. It's not too expensive, 2,900 liters for $3,600, but obviously that's gonna change with every single boat. But make sure every time you visit a port, you are repairing and refueling. You can also set crew to repair your boat whilst you're out on your adventures, but you can also change your name and it's free. I'm pretty sure for every single boat in the game, you can change it as many times as you want. Back onto the topic of fishing techniques, most of them will take between 18 and 24 hours to have the best yield of fish. As soon as you drop a line, it gets pinpointed on your map. If you use your map and you have a look at your lines, as soon as they go blue, that is the best time to go and retrieve your catch. The blue colored boys on your map screen is going to be your best yield. Also, bear in mind with this that when you are fast traveling around and checking different areas, that is still using up time as well. So make sure you are planning out your fishing adventures properly because you could lose a lot of fish. Next up, we are on the map screen. And if we're looking around and say, I've traveled down to this sort of area, boom, found some tuna. Go over to your map, click and drag. You can drop tuna onto the map. You can actually pinpoint hotspots for fish wherever you want to. I'm pretty sure there's unlimited use. Although I don't think you would go too crazy because... There are certain areas that pretty much never have fish anymore. And then as soon as you want to get rid of one, whether it's a tip or one you've placed yourself, just hover over it, right click, and it's gone. So make sure if you find those hot spots, mark them up so that you can remember in the future. And then the final one that we're going to talk about is if you press escape or pause or whatever, save your game as often as you can. Obviously, don't go over the top. Do it in your own sort of pace. But save often there are a lot of bugs in this game crashes there's a lot of lag stuff i've actually had my boat fly yes I'm, I'm not joking my boat actually flew it started spinning around went about 200 300 foot in the air and just flung me somewhere i ended up on land but i managed to reload my game and i was back to where i was beforehand there are bugs there are problems in the game they could cause an entire restart of your game if you are not careful so save often and on that note, that is 20 tips for fishing North Atlantic that I believe you guys need to know. They are so helpful. Some of them are from my stream chat. Some of them I've done research on. 
and they have helped me out a lot. But now they're all compiled into a list in one place in this video. And on that note, that's going to do it for the video. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. Thank you for watching.